I briefly discussed the image mode settings in the image menu overview. When you're first working with Photoshop, you're basically only going to be working in the RGB mode since this mode is most commonly used on the internet. If you've shared a family photo online, then you've already worked in RGB mode. Now I'm going to talk about each one of these modes in depth and tell you when best to use them. So in this section, I'm going to go over the various image modes. And we're going to take a look at each one of these in depth. I'm going to go over what each one does and a little bit about how it works. And then I'm going to give you an example of how you can use the image mode. Now the two you should be most familiar with by this point are RGB color and CMYK color. Now we go over these a lot in this basic course and then the reason that is is because these are the two that we are going to use the most. In fact, you can see that we have it set to RGB right now and especially in the beginning stages of you learning Photoshop, RGB color is going to be the most often used color mode. It stands for red, green, blue and it was specifically engineered to display color on a monitor. CMYK color is the one you're going to use probably second most and this one reflects print engineering so if you have to take something to a printing press uh, or if you're taking something to FedEx Kinko's you're going to be using CMYK color not going to apply so much to your modern day inkjet printer because these are geared towards using the RGB color space since it's more popular and converting that over to whatever they need to convert it over in order to print it index color mode is a narrower color space this gives us a choice from anywhere from 2 to 256 colors to display our image. I'm going to stay with 256, and again, we're going to cover all of these in detail, but this is just a quick example to show you what they look like. You can see we haven't lost much clarity here, but if we zoom in, now you can tell, like right here in my face, that we've lost a little bit of resolution. There's not as much of an even wash in the light over my face. Now we can see some pixelation. If we take that a step further, we're going to drop down to grayscale and that's going to remove all the color information. It's going to prompt us here to make sure that we want to discard the color information and I'm just going to hit OK. Everything has turned a shade of black. If we take that a step even further, we have either bitmap or duotone. Uh, for now, I'm going to go to bitmap just to show you what that is because we're going to take this a step down. Bitmap is going to be basically the same thing as indexed color. It's only going to give us black or white pixels, sometimes called a one bit image and that's because it's either black or it's white if I zoom in here really deeply we have tons of pixels but there is no color gradation it's either black or white and then as we zoom out it's the space between the black or white that gives us the color variation so I'm gonna hit control Z for undo I want to get back to the grayscale and then I'm gonna click on duotone mode duotone is kind of a catch-all term and it refers to monotone, duotone, tritone, and quadtone. For this, we're gonna stick with quadtone, and I'll just show you some interesting variations we can get here by picking a couple of different colors. Hit okay. Come in here and mess with the curves a little bit, get a little different result. Anyway, you can use this really effectively in poster design, which we'll get to in the next series, and the reason that is is because quadtone a lot of times if you're going to print something out, it's extremely cost effective to print out just four colors. And if you know that you're going to print out only four colors in advance, then you can come into the duotone color mode, select quad tone, and then choose exactly what colors you would like to print out. So here I'm going to hit OK. That's kind of a kind of an interesting look. And now I'm going to switch it back to RGB color. And then I'm going to switch over to lab or LAB color. LAB color doesn't really stand for anything. What it stands for is luminosity. That's the L and A and B literally stand for A and B. They're points on a graph. So if we switch over to LAB color, you're going to see that pretty much nothing has changed from RGB. And the reason that is, is because LAB color is based on the RGB color model, but it translates it in a different way. The goal of LAB color is to look at color, in a manner that is closer to the way the human eye sees color. Additionally, most of the other color modes describe different levels of color to add or subtract in order to get the tone that you're looking at, whereas LAB color attempts to describe the color itself in a more objective manner so that later on you can create this color again, kind of regardless of the pigments that you're using. It's really technical, is the bottom line. The last color mode is multi-channel color, and this one is a lot of fun. 
Now, the reason it's a lot of fun, if we come down here to the channels panel, I'm going to go into this. This gives you just a little bit of an idea of how Photoshop sees color. Photoshop actually doesn't see color like you and I are seeing color. It uses these grayscale maps as filters that represent different colors. So if I turn two of them on here, you can see that they'll combine and form a different image. The reason the multi-channel color space is cool is because it allows us to define what colors and what channels these particular grayscale filters represent. So here, if I drop this down to spot color, and let's say I want that to be red, I'll just pull this up to red. In fact, I'm gonna go back over here and say 255 R zero on the green, B zero. Solidity 50%, hit okay. Then we're gonna double click this one, make this one green just for fun. Green 255, red zero, blue zero, hit okay, hit okay. And this is really gonna mess this up because we transferred over to the multi-channel mode from LAB color. And as you can see, the two bottom spot color maps here are basically those points on a graph that I described. These two don't represent color filters the same way an RGB image would, so this is really gonna give us an interesting result. I'm kind of interested to see where this goes. So red, zero, green, zero, blue, 255, hit okay, hit okay. And then let's see if this translates back into an RGB image. Yeah, that's a really weird result. As you can see, these different color modes each do something unique. So having a mastery over them and knowing when to use them is extremely important as we learn Photoshop. And the next couple of lessons, I'm gonna show you how to use each individual one. Well, that's all for now. Please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe below and send any questions that you might have to requests at mahalo.com. Thanks for watching.